What's up vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick and today we're going to be taking a look at the AT7 box mod. Ah uh, yes, the AT7 box mod, one of the most controversial devices to come out so far this year. It's made by a company called Stentorian Vapor and exclusively distributed by our friends over at Watofo. This box mod is weird. It looks weird, it functions weird, and to be honest with you, I really don't feel like it found its niche within this industry. Now, with that being said, speaking of niches, it's meant to go after the PC gaming culture. It's all PC gaming inspired with water-cooled inspired design, as you can see by all the little tubes and circuit boards and everything like that, it's meant to look like a CPU, but in all intents and purposes, does it function? Well, stay tuned for that. We'll go over all the pros and the cons a little bit later. So before I get into this video, I do have to state my intent by saying that I did receive this product for free from the manufacturer for the purpose of doing this video. However, it has no monetary value to me, which means my opinions on it will remain honest and unbiased, of course, as always. With that being said, I'd like to give a huge shout out and thank you to the people over at Watofo for sending this my way. Really do appreciate the opportunity to take a look at this interesting looking mod. So after doing some homework, I found that this device is available in two different colors. You have a white version and a black version. I have the black version here, as you can see by this nice matte black finish. And with that, the price point is going to be around $64.99. Now, I've heard all the way up to $100 for this device, so don't get ripped off. Try to find a good deal if you really want one of these. And if you do want one of these, make sure you check out the links I've got down there right in the description. So without further ado, let's go down to the close-up view and take a better look at this thing. All right, guys, as you can see here, we've got our AT7 in its original box. Let's quickly take a look around the packaging and then we'll talk about what is inside. So first and foremost, really nice looking packaging in my opinion. It's got this kind of uh, spot gloss going on. You got the little uh, embossed silver uh, logos and everything. Looks like a big computer chip on the front here, which I guess is appropriate for what this device is kind of modeled after. Uh, All tech, which is AT and AT7 right there. On the bottom, you have your standard uh, scratch and check, your UPC, another little silver embossed logo there, and a color indication black. Nothing on that side. On the top, another logo with another color indicator. Nothing on that side. And on the back, we have our pretty standard product kind of thing that we always look at here. Packing list, basically just the mod, the manual, and the charging cable. A few little warnings and company information right there and their website. So there you go. Let's take off the top cover. So there we go. There's our AT7 sitting pretty in our box. Let's just move that aside for one second here. We'll check out what's in the bottom. Removing the little foam thing there. We have our user manual, which, you know, booklet form. Nice, all right. Uh, very, 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 very basic. Not much going on here with this user manual. Uh, basically, you have the English text on two sides of one page, and that's about it. You have uh, some safety precautions and some basic, basic specs. And then, uh, you know, what the lights mean, basically. So that's about it. And then you have a whole bunch of other languages there as well. Only other thing, my little buddy, my best friend, a micro USB cable. And uh, it's a flat one, so that's kind of different. That's kind of new and interesting. Uh, I do like flat USB cables because they tend not to get tangled. So um, five little brownie points for you, Centaurian, for including something a bit different from the norm. All right, so here is the AT7 itself. Let's quickly go over some of these specs. First of all, it's designed in California. It uses the Alltech AT chipset. It's a computer chassis inspired design, obviously, if you couldn't tell already. It uses brass radiation tube cooling circulation system, which means absolutely nothing to me. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. If you guys know, make sure you drop a comment in the box below. Uh, it's a unique super large PCB, which I don't know why they brag about in their specs. 510 threaded, the output wattage is 100 watts, the resistance range is 0.1 to 3 ohms, it uses a built-in lithium polymer 3500 milliamp hour battery, an auto adaptive smart power output, instant firing speed, color power and logo LED lights, an acrylic cover, large side fire button design, micro 
micro USB charging port, five volts at one amp, low voltage warning, low resistance protection, short circuit protection, and overcharge protection. So as far as functions are concerned, this device really doesn't have too many of them to be honest with you. There's no screen, there's no power up and down, there's no temperature control or any of that. It's basically just throw an atomizer on there, turn it on, and let it rip. The computer chip will take care of everything for you. But with that, uh, let's just talk about some of these uh, you know, features of this device here. You have your AT7 logo, which glows with an LED behind it, which is kind of cool. Behind that, you have your 3500 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Below there, you have these little tubes, which uh, serve no purpose whatsoever. They are just there for decoration. They're not the water cooling system. They're not any sort of cooling system or anything. They're just there to look pretty. Um, and they're attached to a piece of clear acrylic. It's going to be pretty tough to uh, see that on this video, but hopefully you guys get a glimpse of that. There's also another LED behind here, which uh, illuminates the whole box, which is kind of cool. Then you have uh, the acrylic screen. You'll see it shining here. Luckily, I haven't touched this thing too much in this little up-close portion, so there's no fingerprints on it right now, but it is an absolute fingerprint magnet. Uh, moving on to this side here, this is the kind of blank panel, the opposite side of the fire button. Really not much to talk about here other than the fact that it wiggles like a madman and is noisy and annoying. And then you have a nice little scratch right up there. And I only got this thing a couple of weeks ago, so that's kind of disappointing. Moving on to the back, here's where all the fingerprints will show up. Yeah, this thing, very, very covered in fingerprints. And uh, you have your charging uh, port right there on the back, angled for some reason. And then you have this board of circuitry, which looks very you know, official. Looks like it's functional, looks like it does something, but in actuality it serves no purpose whatsoever once again. Uh, and you can see all of this in great detail in on Todd's video. Todd did a great little uh, tear down of this thing. He did a really nice job on that video, so I'll make sure to link that in the description below if you want to check that out. I am not going to rip mine apart, but uh, you have your 510 connection up top here, which is spring-loaded. This is the final retail version, and they did a little bit better job with the actual 510 version. I'm sure there's a couple videos out there that say it's crap, but mine fits everything flush, 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 which is really nice. Uh, unfortunately, you can only fit up to a 24 millimeter atomizer, otherwise it's going to have a lot of overhang. And then you have your... Uh, fire button. Actually, the fire button's on this side. Fire button over here, you have a nice little scratch there as well. And this thing is just mushy. It's all around just mushy. Uh, there's no good way to actually fire it other than just kind of gripping it and squeezing it. Uh, but other than that, it's just kind of mushy. If you try to fire it with just one finger, uh, it feels a little bit weird, but there you go. Uh, from what I gather, there's only one little uh, trigger right here in the center that actually uh, is functional. So uh, having this whole side panel be the actual fire button is kind of pointless. But then again, who am I to judge what they do? And on the bottom, you have the AT7 logo once again. So there you go. You have the little Stentorian logo, AT7, and that's your lot. That's pretty much it. So just as a quick comparison, I have the prototype version here that they sent me early on, and this is the full retail version. As you can see here, the prototype is a nice uh, glossy kind of look to it, whereas the final retail version is a matte version. To be honest with you, I like the glossy version better. I really like the glossy paint. It holds up nicer. I have no scratch or dings on anywhere, which is nice. And uh, for some reason, I feel like the battery actually lasts longer. Uh, also, the on only other thing is that the charging, when you're charging the prototype version, it has a little soft glow LED kind of slowly on and off, whereas this one here just kind of blinks and is almost annoying. But with that, uh, they're almost identical otherwise. So real quick, let's just fire this thing up with five clicks. One, two, three, four, five and it slowly illuminates the multicolored LED and then just shuts off. As you can see there, that means the device is on. If you try to fire it without any atomizer on it, it just kind of blinks the LED there and nothing happens. Once the battery gets below 50%, the white LEDs turn to blue, and then when it's about you know 1%, it turns to red. You get two puffs out of it and then it's completely dead. So really wish there was a, a few more stages in there to show the uh, you know differentiating uh, of battery percentages, but there you go. And uh, really, let's just throw an atomizer on there real quick. I've got the Recoil Rebel right here, which we're going to use today. So throw that on there, and we'll fire it up real quick for you guys. So pretty quick fire up time, and you can see the uh, LEDs kind of glowing on there. Might be a little bit difficult in this light to see. 
But yeah, they do glow in there. When it's kind of a, you know, you're in a dimly lit room or something like that, it makes a, a lot more of a difference. But it is kind of cool having the LEDs on the inside of the box. It just looks kind of like a gaming PC, which I guess they were going for. So there you go. So that about does it for this little close-up look at the AT7. Let's go back to the main screen, have a quick vape on this thing, and we'll talk about it some more. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the close-up section of the video. Now let's talk about my personal thoughts about this device, some pros, some cons, and whether or not it's worth purchasing. Starting off with my short list of pros today, we have it looks badass. This thing looks cool as hell. It looks like a miniature gaming PC. It looks like someone just took a shrink ray and shrunk it down to a little tiny thing like this here, which is absolutely great. It's exactly what they were going for. And, you know, even the little AT7 logo lights up when you fire it. That just looks cool in my opinion, but uh, this thing really doesn't do a whole lot else that impresses me. Um, other than it's just a talking point, it looks really interesting, looks different, you know, and that's about it. So my only other thing that I really wanted to talk about was the fact that it does a decent job of regulating the power. I have a 0.12 ohm build on here right now, and it's probably hitting at 100 watts. It feels like it's hitting at 100 watts, um, but basically what you're getting out of this thing here is a bypass. So it has it set to a constant 3.7 volts. Now, no matter what you put on top, if it's a one ohm coil or if it's a 0.1 ohm coil, it's gonna hit at 3.7 volts. So with that, yeah, it does a decent job doing that. But other than that, the only thing I can say is it just looks cool. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different here today for the con section. I just have so much to say about this device that I can't really extrapolate on each individual topic for too long, considering that if I did, this video would probably be an hour long. But with that, I want to encourage you guys to leave some comments down there in the box below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this device and any questions that you might have, feel free to ask down there. So basically what I'm going to be doing is rattling off a list of my grievances that I've experienced while using this device. And I have been using it quite a bit. I brought it with me to the London Vape Show, and I pretty much have it with me every single day at work just to keep on the counter, and people always, always, always ask me questions about it. So, without further ado, let's get started. The battery doesn't last long. It only fits up to 24 millimeter atomizers because of that beveled edge. The full retail version's finish is actually worse than the prototypes. 100 watts or 3.7 volts max is not nearly enough for today's market. It just feels really throttled. It doesn't support two amp charging. The angled charging plug is really annoying. It doesn't add functionality or style in my opinion. The clear acrylic parts on this device are a scratch and fingerprint magnet. It's big, bulky, heavy, and uncomfortable to hold. And no, it's not water-cooled, and it never will be. It only has a couple of LEDs on this side only. This side is completely blank, which I really feel like they missed an opportunity there. The panel opposite the fire button is really rattly, and I can't find a way to fix it. The channel around the top beveled edge here just collects a lot of juice and crud. And last but not least, it's too freaking expensive for its own good. So with all that being said, it has a lot of character and potential for that sort of niche market. But to me, it's nothing more than a talking piece. I like putting it out on the counter so that people ask me questions about it and I vape on it and they, you know, are impressed by it. But one thing that really bummed me out is the fact that when you charge this thing, it just kind of blinks and sits there. Uh, whereas the prototype version had a nice soft light glow to to it when it was charging. So I think I might just keep this thing on my desk as just sort of a, you know, some sort of cool accent light. So at the end of the day, is this thing worth purchasing? Would I go out of my way to pick one of these up if I didn't get this one for a review? Well, my answer would be no. No, 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 no. Sorry, Stentorian Vapor. Sorry, Witofo, but it's a no for me on this one here. Uh, this thing looks cool as hell, but that's pretty much all it's got going for it. And looks just don't sell mods like it used to. But with that, am I hopeful for maybe an AT8 or, you know, a next version from them? Yeah, you know, I kind of hope they take our feedback, all the other reviewers, feedback as well as my own and run with it you know come out with an AT8 make a lot of drastic changes here and you got yourself a good mod but with that it's a no for me on this one but by the off chance you guys want to pick one up for yourself make sure you check out the links I've got down there in the description so that about does it for this video guys I hope you enjoyed if you did make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this don't forget to click the notification bell right next to the subscribe button if you want to be alerted whenever I upload videos also leave me some comments in the box below I'd love to hear your thoughts 
all about the Stentorian AT7 box mod. I'm sure this is going to be a good one down there in the comments box below. But uh, also check out the advocacy and my social media links right down there in the description. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And as always, vape on.